Good morning and welcome to this CPE, CTE School Counseling Collaboration, the Lunch and Learn series for school counselors and CDCs. Today we are um, having an extra special topic on promoting CT in college and career ready this um, promise program. So I'm, in, I'm Amy Paula Castro Schrader, the Career Development Consultant, and I'm going to um, pass this over to Dr. Keisha Bryant, School Counseling Consultant with DPI. Good morning. We are excited to have everyone here today, and I would like to take time to introduce two of my colleagues and Amy's colleagues, Dr. Christy Brown, who is a state consultant in the Office of Advanced Learning and Gifted Education and primarily focuses on AIG and honors, and her colleague, Isaac Lake, who is also the state consultant in the Office of Advanced Learning and Gifted Ed Education and works with Cooperative Innovative High Schools as well as CCP. And I am going to turn it over to them for the exciting presentation that they have prepared for our school counselors and career development coordinators. Welcome. Thanks, Thank you so Keisha. much, Keisha. Thank you. We appreciate being here, folks. Um, I'm grateful to my partner in this work, Dr. Brown, uh, for all things, including advancing the slide deck this morning. Um, happy to be here with each of you. Thank you for taking time to be with us this morning. Um, we've, this is kind of an overview of, of CCP, the Career College Promise Program, and, uh, but we're going to focus a little bit on the CTE pathway, um, but, you know, just as, this is a launch and learn, so let's, let's let it work for you all. So, you know, if you mm -hmm. have a questions, comments, just please unmute yourselves or use the chat. Um, I can't really see the chat, so I'll in invite my colleagues to help with that. Um, but, you know, again, with a small group, everybody's, we're all educators, so just unmute and share. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So I maybe should have had some more background slides, but CCP is the Career College Promise program that has since 2011, when this legislation was passed, uh, been sort of the umbrella for all the ways our students can take college classes while they are in high school. So that is called dual enrollment. And um, we have some resources at the end of this slide deck that we want to make sure we get to that we hope will be helpful for you, including just the main CCP page of, uh, on our website, the advanced learning website on the DPI website. Uh, and that will bring you to to other resources, including advising resources that that are great that are directed at students and families, but also advising resources with the same information, but targeted to you to counselors. And I want to say that the very first step we always say to parents and everybody else, the first step in dual enrollment should be the student meets with his or her high school counselor. That should be step one. And during that meeting, uh, for intentional advising, we hope that students will share their future aspirations and choose a pathway. So CCP by legislation offers three structured pathways for students to begin or complete uh, an associate degree or CTE stackable credentials. Uh, so we do want students to choose a pathway. Let me say we, we discourage what we call random random acts of dual enrollment, which is I don't like the Spanish teacher at my high school, so I'm going to go to the community college and, you know, that way I'll get the same AP, the same GPA point as, as AP, but it's a one off. That's not the intent. The intent is to, for students to choose a pathway and stay on that pathway and to, to complete it if they can. So these are the three pathways you see college transfer pathway. Uh, this would lead to an associate degree uh, courses in this pathway. Uh, because of the comprehensive articulation agreement between the community college system and the UNC system, courses in the college transfer pathway will transfer if the student gets a C or better. And, and in those courses, the UNC system will accept those courses for credit. I should add that it depends uh, which university, whether or not, and what your major is, whether or not they will give you credit in your major. Okay, so a math course uh, may count. Uh, at one university, but if you go to NC State and you're in the School of Design, they might say we will give you elective credit for that. Anyway, that's getting into the weeds. That's college transfer pathway. The CTE pathway is super awesome. We're going to try to focus on that today. 
And as you know, there are stackable credentials between and the articulation agreement from high school to college uh, for CTE. So students who take high school CTE courses, many of them, many of those courses can also be uh, to dual enrollment in the other way, that is the community college will give students CTE credit for those courses. And so they do stack. And of course the CC CTE pathway uh, is geared towards students who, who uh, are interested in careers out, right out of high school. And there are incredible opportunities in North Carolina in, in this pathway. And then the third pathway is are our cooperative innovative high schools. Most of them are called early colleges. All early colleges in North Carolina, at least all the ones that are actually cooperative innovative high schools, they're all cooperative innovative high schools. Somebody out there might call themselves an early college, but you're not a cooperative innovative high school unless you come through our process and large application process that ultimately gets approved by the General Assembly. But these are our early colleges, our middle colleges, uh, schools like the Wayne School of Engineering, the Martin Nesbitt Discovery Academy, um, so they, they have many names, uh, but for the most part, these are schools that offer grades nine through 12 with an optional 13th year. Uh, our middle colleges, which, which predate our early colleges, uh, are, are uh, actually uh, for juniors and seniors, but also have that optional 13th year. Um, but our early colleges by legislation uh, target for admission uh, three uh, target populations, students who would be at risk of not graduating high school, uh, students who would be first generation college goers, and students who would benefit from accelerated instruction. Almost all of our uh, school districts have a cooperative innovative high school, and several have more than one. And I should say that most of the ones that have opened in recent years have a CTE focus. Historically, most of our cooperative innovatives, most of our early colleges have had a college transfer focus. But when a second one opens up in a, in a district, it's often uh, intentionally uh, to, to offer the career uh, pathway uh, for students. And uh, again, amazing opportunities there. I should clarify that CIHS students can choose the college transfer pathway or the CTE pathway. And unlike other CCP students, students in a cooperative innovative high school can actually pursue both at the same time. Uh, that is different from our traditionals. Uh, so let's move on. Um, yeah, so let me move this over here so I can see the whole thing. Um, yeah, so as you see, I don't need to read this for everybody, but these schools are designed for students who, uh, I should say this pathway designed for students who want to earn that certificate, the diploma or the industry, industry recognized credential. Uh, and it is a seamless framework. We're very lucky in North Carolina. And in fact, many other states uh, wish that they had the kind of uh, community college system, a whole system with an office that oversees the whole system and, and uh, you know, 58, uh, colleges and, and many with satellite campuses and we at DPI work very closely with our partners at the NC Community College System Office uh, to develop this whole seamless framework and it is it, and again it, it the framework includes uh, the UNC system schools uh, but these are kind of just highlighted bullets about uh, the CTE pathway and I think that uh, one of the things that we would love students and families to understand are the incredible opportunities for uh, good paying jobs in local communities uh, right out of high school that do not require a four year degree. I um, like to say that, and this may have changed, but the, the average age of an electrician in North Carolina is over 60 years old. Um, we can't keep people in welding programs because they're getting hired as soon as they get the first credential at $25 an hour. Um, it's there are so many opportunities here for our local economies and uh, and their communities. Let's push on. Um, yeah, I, I, again, I don't want to read all of this to you, but I think it's worth noting that almost a third of our students are taking at least one college one college course while they are in high school. And again, most of them take more than one because they have chosen a pathway. Uh, but 
participation continues to tick up. I had a slight dip in the last couple of years, but it's continued to tick up. And like this year, we're, we will report in, in, mm -hmm. in our 24 report that it's actually 35% of, of last year's graduates had taken a college course in high school. Uh, but we also want to make sure that every student and family is aware of this opportunity and aware of the benefits uh, thereof. And that's where you all come in. Absolutely. And Isaac, if I can just piggyback on Please. what you said, um, just you did mention this, but this is the the highlights from 21-22 school year. And as Isaac mentioned, um, we're working on the data for this year. He's working on the, the huge um, CCP annual report and the data for this year is is trending up. And over the past years they have, it's just that one year there was a there was a, a decrease, but it's it's coming back up. So I just wanted to make sure we honed in on that point. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I should clarify that we, you know, the report, so the this this these data points are from the 2023 report, and the 2023 report relies on the previous year's data. Uh, and and so likewise, this year's report, the 24 report, will include data from the 22-23 school year. Yep. Um, I think what stands out here is that most of the students who participate in this program do earn high school credit through dual enrollment. In other words, most of them are passing, uh, successfully completing these courses. Uh, and we have seen this for, for many, many years, this last data point on average high school students perform better at community colleges than the typical community college student population. Uh, so our students are doing well, but what we also want to really lift up is that these students, it is critical that you and your colleagues have timely communication with your college partners so that if students are not attending a college course, you find out about that in time to intervene. If students are struggling in a college course, you find out about that in time to intervene. And uh, as we'll see in a minute, the state board has actually uh, approved a, a policy that goes into effect uh, in January, whereby all school districts that offer CCP need to have a partnership agreement with their community college uh, to ensure things like this kind of timely communication. Absolutely. And again, if folks have questions, please just unmute or put it in the chat. Uh, last year, for the first time, we were able to report uh, th this um, this data by uh, race and ethnicity. And so it's, I think, very interesting and instructive to see who is participating and uh, and where there are gaps and, and places where we need to, to do some more outreach. You know, and very much like AIG, and of course, I'd, I'd invite Chrissy's thoughts here, but we, we just like when, we, in the AIG work, in that work, you want to make sure that every student who could benefit from AIG programming is being found, identified, and reached out to. Likewise, uh, as you can see, about 32 uh, percent of, of Asians and 40 percent of white students are participating, also 30 percent of our uh, Alaska, American Indian or Alaskan Native, but you do also then see 21 percent uh, Black or African American participation, 25 percent of our Hispanic or Latino students. And so we do think there's room for growth uh, for, for some targeted and intentional outreach uh, to these students. Absolutely. Um, like we are making progress, but there's still lots of room to go. And we have to um, open opportunities and access for these courses for our students. We can't gatekeep. Um, we have to, to just make these courses available to all our students and provide them the supports to be successful. So we, we still, we're doing, um, you know, we're doing fighting the good fight, but there's still room to grow. Thank you, Chrissy. 
Um, I don't want to linger here, but this chart does show uh, the eligibility. We should have mentioned back when we had the slide up with all three pathways that there are eligibility requirements for participation in CCP, specifically for the college transfer pathway and the CTE pathway. Uh, and so essentially students need to demonstrate college readiness with a 2.8 unweighted GPA or by some other measure uh, or, or by there are additional measures that, that can be used. Um, I should say that cooperative innovative high school students do not have the same eligibility requirements. They can again dual enrollment in the ninth grade. They don't have to be a junior or senior. And as soon as they show up to the early college, they can start taking college classes. That said, there are some course eligibility requirements uh, from the community college system for gateway math and English courses. But this is a graphic from the CCP operating procedures on the community college system website. They are updating their website and frankly, it is now more difficult to find the CCP operating procedures. We hope that that will change soon, but I would, we would strongly recommend if you do one thing as an outcome of this meeting, if you have not already done so, locate the CCP operating procedures on the community college system website, because that is where you will find all of the details about how students are eligible to participate in this program and how they maintain eligibility. Uh, so it, it can be kind of complicated. I don't want to get into the weeds, but there are there are opportunities for juniors and seniors, and then there are some opportunities in select CTE pathways for freshmen and sophomores. And you see that there are that that the, the, there's a principal's recommendation uh, it can uh, help students who might not otherwise be eligible uh, to participate in those pathways. Pause to see if there are any questions. I'll go back there. Mm -hmm. There are no questions in the chat right now. Okay, okay. great. Okay. So uh, we have been for the past four years uh, participating in a, a grant study funded by the Federal Department of Education. Uh, we, together with our partners, the community college system, uh, together with uh, the early college research, it used to be called the Serve Center at UNCG. Now it's the Early College Research network or something, but Dr. Julie Edmonds has for many years been a leader nationally in research around this space and she is, uh, she and her team are leading this this uh, study which is which is in its fourth year. And we're consistently finding uh, outcomes like what you see here. So uh, th there are positive aspects for all CCP students. And in the CTE pathway, the study found positive impacts, uh, particularly for groups historically underrepresented in post-secondary education. So we think that's really important mm -hmm. to lift up. And so you see, yeah, thank you. And so uh, if I just, no, just, just, I mean, it's, it's rather remarkable. Six times more college credits earned while in high school, but also more likely to enroll and more likely, more likely to graduate from high school, more likely mm -hmm. to enroll in college. So really a head start. And, um, you know, this is all tuition free for students and families. And so I just, we just wanted to lift up that, that while all students are benefiting from dual enrollment through CCP, uh, students from underrepresented uh, or disadvantaged households have benefited even more. Uh, and this is, and again, the last, I think one of the last slides in this slide deck has a link to these and other uh, websites, but this, the, from the main CCP web page on the DPI website, and again, it's DPI, then advanced learning, then CCP, uh, you can find a link from our CCP main page to this CCP research and data. And there you will find uh, that that's the source of these data points and information, but they also have some great infographics, which you can actually print up and hand out that just makes it's a one page or one two page document that really makes clear to students and families what the opportunities are and what the benefits are. 
Uh, and so, and then we have an infographic for each of the three pathways on that page. And I'll also say that, I mean, we'll, if we have time at the end, we'll click around our website a little to show you, but we also have those, um, some of those things that Isaac mentioned for families, for students and families, we have those um, translated into Spanish as well, so. Yes, indeed, thank you so much for mentioning that. Any questions, comments? We'll go to the cause. So far. There are none in the chat as of now. Don't be shy, folks. We can practice our wait time. <laughs> there are CDCs and school counselors in the room who are not shy. You must be, okay. you're providing great information, but um, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> awesome. Well, then we will keep we'll going forward. Yeah. Yep. This, this may be familiar to most folks, uh, but we do want to make sure that everybody understands that in October of Last year, the state board uh, adopted this new policy. There's now a CCP policy in the state board policy manual. And folks, if you have not bookmarked the state board policy manual, please do that. Uh, but what this state policy says is that by December of 23, so now, every school district and college partner need to have a CCP partnership agreement. This is essentially a, memo, a mem memoranda of understanding. We want to stress that these are local agreements between partners. Uh, but this, the little context here, particularly during COVID, but in general in CCP, you know, it's a great opportunity. But again, the, the real challenge is making sure that the grownups are talking to each other so that when students on a college campus are struggling, somebody at the high school knows in time to help that student before they withdraw or fail. Uh, because, and this is something that we should address in intentional advising, are, are the, the consequences of failing a college course. CCP students have two transcripts. Once you start dual enrollment, you have a college transcript in addition to your high school transcript, and that college transcript will stay with you. So failure, uh, you know, failures on that transcript can impact admissions or financial aid and scholarships, et cetera. So students need to know the, what, what the consequences are. Anyway, let's advance. These slides just are taken straight from the policy itself. And so these are the seven components that the state board requires to be addressed in these partnership agreements. State board policy does not stipulate how partners address these components, simply that they do address the components. And really what you see in these bullets are, are a list of the, the key things that need to be in place to make CCP successful. There's certainly more that you can do, and some of the partnership agreements that have been shared with me uh, get into other things like withdrawal policy and and other you know all kinds of things. Um, but these things need to be in the agreement. And these really do just ensure students' success. Like these are just, I think, really um, best practice for supporting students. And we really did, particularly during during the pandemic, we really saw students. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. th there were some students who were really falling through the cracks because, you know, everything went to asynchronous online instruction. And, uh, you know, and so, again, it, 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 it became glaringly obvious that we needed that some partners were doing great and other partners like didn't have each other on speed dial or whatever. And so now hopefully they do. Any questions or thoughts about the partnership agreement or anything else so far? Isaac, one question did come in uh, <clears throat> a little bit after you started on this new slide. Question asking, will you please post the link to the CCP operating procedures? Um, okay, thank you for yeah. that question. I will share that I actually searched for it this morning. And what I, my if I start typing NC in my in a in a web browser, it takes me. It assumes I want to go to the NC Community College System CCP webpage, and it takes me there. And it's a new page now, and the old page had a link on it straight to the operating procedures that you could see. The new one does not. I apologize. 
Uh, but what I would encourage folks to do, and I, I, our email uh, address is on the last slide, but there's a really important partner in this work who could not be with us today, but his name is Aaron Mabe, and Aaron is the CCP coordinator for the Community College System Office, and he can find the operating procedures. He knows that we've been somewhat challenged in the recent weeks to find that web page and so I, I I yes I that's I'm sorry that I can't just link you right to it there's a link again yeah. the, the the link that I mentioned is on the last slide of this slide deck and it will take you to the main CCP page at the community college system that then links by pathway um, and I actually believe that that website is still under development so apologies mm -hmm. for the frustration there we will share um, the slide deck with you all also to have access to the links that we have um, and to our website. And we can add um, Aaron's email address for you mm -hmm. as well if you need to reach out to Aaron. Yeah, and if anybody has, if that's a challenge, just please reach out to either of yeah. us and we'll swiftly connect you with Aaron. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay, so we'll keep going. So, right, so we just, we've been stressing for many years that the, uh, the goal here is completion. Oh, thank you very much. Looks like Aaron's email is now in the chat. Yeah, ask Aaron. Thank you. Um, but so uh, for many, many reasons, again, we don't want to, it, it, random acts of dual enrollment happen, we understand that. But the goal is for students to complete an associate degree or to complete a career credential or credentials so that they have something in addition to the high school diploma uh, to take with them when they leave us. Uh, and so this really requires intentional advising on the front end. Uh, and so we are very grateful to each of you. And again, one of the resources linked to the, in, in this slide deck is to a web page on our website where you can find uh, advising resources, which we would encourage you to print out and just give students, right? Just the good old hard copies. Uh, but also you could post them on your website. Several, lots of folks do that uh, so that students and families can find them there. Anyway, these are sort of perennial challenges, students cherry picking courses, students frankly gaming their GPA. Uh, I suspect everyone knows that a, a, a course on the college transfer pathway gets the same GPA weight as an AP course. They are often semester long courses, uh, sometimes even an eight week course uh, that can seem attractive to students. And with, you know, with the AP, you have to take the test and do well on the test to get college credit with CCP. If it's college transfer course and you make C or better, UNC system will give you credit for it. And that of course also helps your high school GPA. But we, so knowing that students will do this, how can we be proactive to ensure that they have every, uh, all the information and support they need to engage this program as it is intended, which is to choose a pathway and stay on it to completion. Um, yeah, and I think it's just really important to to remind students. I know we have it everywhere in our information, but that while this is is a great opportunity, this does stay on their college transcript. So that they that has come up several times and that's just yes. something we really need to reiterate to to parents and students i think yes absolutely so. um and you know some students may think that oh well this is just for, for exploration maybe i'll like this let me go take a course or maybe i'll like that let me go try it um and exposure is great uh, uh, but we, it, 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 some of our students, it's just all over the map. They've got a bit of this and a bit of that, and it doesn't lead them to anything. They don't end up completing a degree or, or a credential. Uh, so these are just some of the things that, that we, that we uh, want to lift up. And we should also say our partners at each community college, the colleges themselves now have to report completion data, and it's one of the things by which they are evaluated. So they want everybody to complete. Um, 
Right. So these are just some things that we we kind of lift up whenever we're talking to anybody about this stuff. Um, but we do think that every eighth grader deserves to at least become aware of the opportunities for dual enrollment. Uh, or every ninth grader or rising junior, since it's mostly juniors in, in our in our traditional high schools that can begin to participate. Uh, so we hope that it's something that's just a standard part of intentional advising beginning in the eighth grade. Uh, and then we, we, again, we really encourage all of you to continue uh, your collaboration with college partners so that you have structured, regular communications. Uh, there are often uh, CCP leadership teams with representatives from the district and or from the high school and from the college that meet regularly, these are things that we strongly encourage. And then we, one of the main reasons to encourage that is so that we can have timely interventions so that students will, will be successful. Uh, other questions that come up all the time, um, to go back quickly to the, yeah, so we often get a question, is there a community college course that can uh, satisfy the high school graduation for economics and personal finance? And the answer is no. The community college system has not identified a course that aligns substantively with that uh, curriculum. Students need to take the high school course. Uh, world languages. Our world languages have never been included on the dual enrollment allowances chart, which is one of the links that we'll share with you. The dual enrollment uh, chart shows those community college courses that students can use to complete high school graduation requirements. Uh, it's a short list. There are many courses that students can take, but these are the ones that, that map directly to high school graduation requirements. Anyway, world languages has never been on it. So occasionally we'll get the question, uh, our student wants to go take Spanish at the community college, can they do that? That is a local decision. So yes, students can do that if you as a school or you as a school district decide that that is an option for students. Um, and I should say that in our early colleges, this is standard practice uh, because they usually don't have a world languages teacher. Most of them are on the college campus and they are cooperative innovative high schools do a good job of optimizing dual enrollment. So, so students are doing a, a lot of dual enrollment in, in our early colleges, et cetera. Um, can a student go to a private college and take a college course and get high school credit for it? Yes. But that again is a local decision. So if you decide to let students do that, know that you are starting a precedent. And same with UNC, UNC system. They want to go to, you know, NC State and take a course, or uh, UNC Pembroke take a course. Can they get high school credit for that? Yes. Will the state reimburse the tuition for that course? No. Will the state reimburse tuition for a course at a private college? No. Now, the exception there are the few of our early colleges that partner with UNC system schools or the private universities. So there's an early college at Guilford. Those students take college courses at Guilford and those college courses are reimbursed because that's their college department. Same thing with NC State, et cetera. But other than that, uh, students who are not in an early college or cooperative innovative high school, again, it's a local decision if you want to give high school credit for these courses, these college courses, but students and families need to know that tuition will not be reimbursed. Okay, and then there are courses that are that are outside of DPI guidance. This, this language comes from the State Board Policy Manual from Course for Credit Policy uh, that says that, that uh, principals can, shall grant uh, credit for college courses, et cetera. That's, that means once the high school approves enrollment in a CCP course, this principal shall grant credit, but it is a choice for the school. Uh, but the courses that are on our dual enrollment allowances chart are the courses that are quote, addressed by DPI guidance. So courses outside of that, the other courses, principals may award credit if an analysis of the college course curriculum shows substantial alignment with the high school course for which you would grant uh, credit. And it is incumbent upon our schools and leaders to do the due diligence around that 
analysis. Uh, so that, that comes up a lot. Let's see what else. I think we're getting towards the end of what we have. Yeah. We are. All right. So uh, that second link is going to take you to that new web page that I've described, which is, is the main page for CCP on the Community College website. Both, basically, both of those links are the same, which they didn't used to be. Uh, but the, the, our main page is a good place to start. From our main page, you will find links to those advising resources. You'll find links to the research and data. And yeah, I think if you just scroll down right here, the links to the advising, okay. Um, well, while we're here then, right, right. Okay, good. So click on CTE pathway, if you would, Chrissy. So this is a nice uh, thing that you, like I say, you put this on your website if you like, just print out copies, and share them with students and families. Uh, this goes to the, some of the data points that we had bulleted. It also tells you about the study itself. And there, if you pause right there, you will see a very good graphic about who is participating, uh, broken out in lots of different ways, including by gender and including by uh, socioeconomics. Thank you, that's good. And so we will see that the, there's still more of our female than male students are participating. And we've, we've already discussed the differences in participation by subgroups. And so this, we, we hope will encourage you to re reach out and make sure, you know, that our male students know about this opportunity, that our, our, our black and Hispanic students know about this opportunity and, and about the benefits thereof. And uh, we don't need to to look at each one, but but what, you know that that web page from what from whence we came also has graphics for the other pathways. So there's a similar uh, infographic for the college transfer pathway and for our cooperative innovative high schools. This is the college transfer pathway. Mm -hmm. So you see students in this pathway are nine percentage points, uh, by nine percentage points, more likely to enroll in college. So again, if you wanna raise awareness about CCP opportunities, we hope that these handouts will help. And now we do wanna go back to our main CC page if we can uh, to see some of the resources there. Yeah, uh, da, 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 yep. So there's a description of the pathways, who can participate, and there you see our advising resources. So the student information one is geared towards students and families. And this is, again, just a great thing. You can have it on your website. You can print it off and give it to students and families. Yep. It, and uh, yeah, common questions that that families and students ask, um, like, what if I fail this college class? Mm -hmm. And folks, of course, one of the things that we need to make sure our students understand is that the pace uh, and, mm -hmm. and feel, if you will, of college courses are different. You know, you're not going to see that professor every day and, and they might not be as accessible and you might only have two or three large assessments on which your grade is based. So we need to make sure that our students understand these things uh, up front and also that they can get support both mm -hmm. from, 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 their, from you all at the high school and also from the student support services at the college. All, all student support services at the college are open and free. Uh, to our students as well. Um, at the very top of this document, we have a sentence that basically says the way to get started is by meeting with your high school counselor. Uh, yeah, consider your goals for dual enrollment through and consult with your high school counselor and select a pathway. So we think that's important. And then um, you can see there the participation, et cetera. Um, and we will note that this is also available in Spanish. Yeah, I'm going to go and click on that just to show yeah. you, because please use that and. Oh, 
a great resource to give out to students and families. It's the same exact information. Yep. And then there is also a document with the same information, but geared towards uh, our school personnel. And so for someone who's perhaps new in the role or just getting started with CCP, this again, it's the, it's the same information. It's, it's grouped and structured in the same way. Uh, but it is geared towards students, uh, towards our school personnel. Mm -hmm. And then, and then maybe just as we leave folks, we might want to just look at uh, a couple of the other uh, links on our main CCP webpage, including the dual enrollment, uh, the dual credit allowances chart, uh, which if you just scroll, keep scrolling down. And I couldn't remember if it was up or down. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That is the dual credit allowances chart. I should say it has not changed in the past couple of years. So the footnote indicates it, uh, you know, it, it hasn't changed since 21, 22. Right. This chart, uh, it begins at the top of the chart. It, it, it has the college courses in the middle and over to the right, uh, the high school equivalent. And at the bottom of the chart, we flip it. Uh, so you have the high school graduation requirements and then those college courses that can satisfy them. Um, other questions we get a lot, let's say a student um, takes AP English 3, we get this one all the time. A student takes AP English 3 at the high school and then does well on the AP test. And then a community college says, well, we'll give you credit for English 111. And then the question that comes to us is, well, this the college has given this student credit for English 111 based on their experience in high school English 3. Can this student therefore uh, just not take English 111 and go ahead and get English 4 without 111? No, they can't. Uh, students do not get more than one high school credit for their experience in a high school course. So to complete English 4 through dual enrollment, the student will need to take and pass English 111 and English 112 and then a Brit Lit course, either 241 or 242. Okay, anyway, these are the courses that are addressed by DPI guidance. And uh, this can also be useful to share with students and families and, you know, just look at it together with the students and, and plan a pathway and a course of study. Okay. Um... What else should I click, Isaac? I don't know. Let's go back to the slide deck and, and just look at uh, okay. that last page of links, and then we'll make sure people see our email address. I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can get back to the slide deck easily. Because, okay. let's see. Just a Again, any, any questions, thoughts, ideas? I mean, basically that it, I will put up the slide deck to show you our email and but you may see. I'll also share while Chrissy is doing that, that we do uh, webinars every other month for our CCP coordinators and uh, we send out a newsletter each month, which has the information about how to join those webinars. Uh, we call them meetups, CCP meetups. Uh, and so if you would like to receive that, that we call it the CCP monthly update. If you are not receiving those updates and would like to, if you reach out to me, I'm happy to add you to the subscription list. And that's where you find information about all the stuff we've talked about, uh, any new resources that come online. There's, there's going to be an awesome conference in February called DE24, Dual Enrollment 24. Uh, it's actually... Uh, we're doing it in con to, together with the community college system and all of the partners on that grant. It's, paid, it's funded through that grant. So this is the last time we'll do it, but this is a national conference. It's February 28th, 29th. Uh, and it's, it, we have about, I think there's plus 500 people registered right now. A little over half are from North Carolina, but it's a great opportunity to find out about dual enrollment uh, across the country. And, uh, and just know that we continue to be leaders in that space.
Isaac and Chrissy, thank you so much for doing this today. Dr. Bryant had to step out. She's you know, doing the multitasking offsite mm-hmm. in the field, supporting school counselors. Um, I, I've i learned something new today, more than one thing new, several things. And the last thing being your monthly meetups and newsletter, I will be sending you an email to join that. So I'm up to date on um, what we can do in CTE to support CCP. And I did put, hopefully I put your email correctly in the chat there. I heard you say email you directly um, to get on that that newsletter um, emailing list. Appreciate both of you sharing your emails for contact. Um, We will be posting, I'll be posting this PowerPoint, updated PowerPoint to the CDC Moodle by the end of the week. And Dr. Bryant will be sharing it as well to the field, to school counselors. So you'll have the emails, everybody, um, in that, as well as the link to the various documents and sites. Um, appreciate noting there that Aaron wasn't able to get here today to join us for this CCP session, and his email, of course, is in there. Um, CCP is, is a collaborative effort, and community college, K-12, all of us within K-12, and parents and communities um, as as noted by your comment earlier, Isaac, that the state board is now saying we need to have a community partnership, correct, and a contact for these programs. Um, more than a third of our students, as you said, are doing this, and it's making a difference. It's making an incredible difference, and that's what we're all about. Are there any closing comments that either of you want to to make before we wrap it up for everybody? We just appreciate being with you today. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for the invitation. Um, and, and we appreciate our, our constant collaboration with your team and uh, appreciate everybody who was with us today. Uh, thanks for the shout outs. We're getting in the chats. And thank uh, yeah, you for here. thank you for everything you all are doing to support yes. students to be successful in these and other programs. Thank you both. And thank you everybody as well for joining in. We could not do this without you. It's a team. You all have a great day. Thank you all so much. Thanks. Bye-bye.